you You're retain and gravitate towards, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's just not my thing. Well, but, but you know, her sister's a writer, Maddie, and she just wrote a, a fantasy script that's amazing. So there's probably a hint of her mom in there, or, you know, like what books you gave to her as a child although, resonated enough. Although speaking of fantasy, I did read this year. Have you read um, 1Q84 Murakami? No, is it great? It's crazy, but that's sort of like fantasy, religion, sex. Yeah like a crazy combination of a lot of things, but that it, there is a, it's a different kind of fantasy element, but um, I did, I did love that. And that's very fiction. <laughs> and was there a book in your like childhood or adolescence, probably more that opened your eyes, you know, to a world, like something that just transformed you, whether it was because you loved it so much or it taught you about something you weren't aware of. Was there something that was life changing? One of those teenage books? An amazing book. And then recently I read The Alchemist for the first oh, time. I loved The Alchemist. I, don't know. I never read it. And oh. I, I do read quite a bit. And I, it was, and it, it was so, it came at the exact timing. Yeah. Really interesting, actually. Um, a really sweet fan gave it to me in Brazil, um, a copy of it in Brazil when I was there for press for the politician. And I had it on my bookshelf forever. And I, I was going out of town and, and I and I grabbed it and put it in my bag and I like remembered I had it when I was having like a full panic attack mm -hmm. about my career. And I, I just grabbed it and it was like the exact thing that I needed to reset mm. my my um ego and uh and I feel like that book I read it when I was living in Latin America. It's the only book I've read in both English and Spanish. And it is because that, you know, of course, was written in Spanish first. And, um, and I feel like that book, and there are some like this, like, I feel like the same way about Charlotte's Web that do find you at the right time. Yeah. You know, that, I have not read that in so long. Okay, but. well, you, you have to. Okay, so um, the pandemic was a time where things, talking about egos, it's like everything was slowed down, you were able to be more introspective about what you wanted I mean I think some were if we were lucky enough I wonder um when you did slow down was did you find time to read did you find like uh, there's this beautiful book by Margaret Wrinkle I don't know if you know who she is she had on my bookshelf across from me called Late Migrations um mm -hmm. their collection of stories and basically it's her reflection on and Leah you made me think about this but of nature of simple things of the bird in our backyard in Tennessee and so I wonder because I felt this way for the first time in a long time I laid and with my girls and stared at a big moon which was I live in New York City so we never had you know it was like moving around and work and this and like we never had time for the simple moments and we made time for it and I and I don't want that to go away so I wonder if during the pandemic you found time for for books if you found time for nature if how you grounded yourself we're, well we're I'm still figuring out uh, no. <laughs> no, weirdly because my career is in uh, mostly I'm directing television right now and I've watched so little of it so weirdly not with books but I I I watched a lot, I binge watched a lot of TV, <laughs> which was unusual. I don't watch yeah. any, so it was good for me to do that. And I did read a lot of books um, and I found, what I found that was profound for me as an entertainer is that it's really important. At this time, I realized how important it was for people to get out of themselves and to, to walk a mile in another person's shoes mm -hmm. and to just forget about their troubles. All these years being an entertainer, I didn't really realize that it actually is a really important thing. Mm. What we do, uh, you know, even even you guys, you know, on TV and like homey and take our mind off of things and make us remember that it's good to be friendly or whatever it is, like mm -hmm. it's important. So I really realized the importance of entertainment and books, which I should know, but I didn't really know <laughs> until. Well, it's like a good reassurance that you've chosen a life's work on something that, you know, matters. And it's it, to so it, many people. It does. It's easy to forget when you're doing it. I'm sure for you too. Like mm -hmm. everyone says like, look at this nice person. Like, I'm so happy she's in my living room. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to forget how important that is. It sounds mm -hmm. dumb, but that's what I got from yeah. 
Were y'all together or no? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh. A lot of people. <laughs> We were together. No, I take care of I take care of my mother. My mother in law lives with us, so it was like every day trying to figure out. Oh, that fish is dry. You know, <laughs> God, I need the dry fish. Um, you know, it was all about cooking and and reading. Yeah, mm -hmm. I read. I reread like the I told you right the Alchemist and for I reread the Four Agreements and um, mm. the Artist Way and the Power of Now. And those oh, I love the Artist Way. Yeah, is this Isn't great? the Artist Way is. Um, I had I had. I oh, I'm bad. Like if for anyone that's on here, if you if you read the artist way and you've like done it properly and like worked <laughs> yeah. the morning pages. Yeah, like I get through one week of morning pages and then I'm like, um and like the artist date and all that. like I love it, but I, I I have yet to actually accomplish the full course. Mm -hmm. I just I, I I had to let go of the like perfectionism. Yeah, judgment of that. I'm like I, I it comes to me when I need it. And I use what I what I <laughs> use, and that's great. But I really love that book. It's it's really 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 it's a wonderful guide. Um, there's just so much for there's something for everybody in there, and um, yeah, I love that. There book. really is, and it's so funny because it's I read it when I was in Latin America too with my best friend. We were living there. She's a photographer, and I was like I was like, but I'm not an artist, you know. Like I felt kind of like an imposter, but that's the whole point. It's like <laughs> you, you don't. Art. Let's get rid of the imposter. Be what you want to be. And I and I, I recommend that book to so many people that are going through transitions or um I mean that was that would have been a great pandemic accompaniment. I wish I had thought about it. If yeah. I have um my grandmother who who my mom's mom, um, whose painting is behind me. Um, but I can't show you because it's a naked lady. Is it her painting, a portrait of her, or was she an artist? No, no, it's a naked lady. But uh, okay. uh <laughs> she was an artist and she was um really a, like a, just an awesome person and, and um, really big inspiration in my life. And, um, and she had a copy of the artist way with all of her notes oh. and all of her sketch little doodles and all of her things. And I have it. So it's really, it's like one of my most prized possessions is her copy of the artist way. I mean, I don't, I, I hope she would be okay with that. I know it's quite, <laughs> her, but um, she'd be okay. Yeah. That makes me want to weep because I do think there's something so revealing about that book and to have somebody's copy. I, I don't know if you've ever read The History of Love, but I read mm -hmm. it when I was 23. Yeah. It's by, um, I think, Nicole Krause. I hope I'm not somebody, somebody type in. We have some good readers here. I'll make sure I got the right author. But I read it when I was young and I was staying with my mom and I highlighted and underlined all my thoughts. And it's about love and, you know, general um and my mom re read then picked it up off my nightstand and read it and just was so in awe of what a 20 you know what her daughter who she loves but also a 23 year old would highlight about love you know she found it such fun to read that and I'm sure like Zoe and both of you having your mom's and grandma's copy of the artist way must be like the best best gift yeah and I have in the power of now too it's her and I have all of her highlighted stuff too and she was so she was such an amazing artist and such a like unbelievably um interesting spirit it's like so cool to get always feel like I have a window into you know that I can I feel like I can connect with her when I see her notes and what she's highlighting and sometimes it feels like she's looking out for me because it'll be something that I that I really needed what she highlighted so it's very cool it's it's, it's really and I, can I say on a side note a very personal thing mm -hmm. my well, what? when my mom <laughs> wait, my mom waited for her to go she went with her us in our in the room and she waited for Zoe to fly in to let go and go to the spirit ah. world so she's, we're, I feel very, very close to her. So every time I do open these, but it's interesting. It really is. It does feel like she's like, oh, looking out for you. Mm. Oh, I feel um, the same way about my grandmothers. I was, I, my, I'm named, we're both named after our grandmothers. I have a twin sister, Barbara. And, um, and I was named after my Grammy, Jenna from, she was from West Texas. And she lived in the same, her, my grand, my mom's dad was a home builder. She lived in the house that he built until she had to go into the a retirement community. And um, she never graduated from college, but she, both of my grandmothers loved to read and they, for different reasons. I mean, they were very different people. And my grandmother, 
Jenna had a subscription to National Geographic and Barbara and I as little kids would like sneak into it in a, a gym collection. She loved the natural world um, and taught us all the constellations in the sky. And we would flip through the pages of these magazines. And I realized later it was like all the places she wouldn't travel to but wanted to, you know, and she was curious forever. But it's so interesting. I think grandparents play like, I mean, at least in my life, I'm so lucky to have had them until I was an adult, um, mm -hmm. that they played such an important part in, in everything. I mean, I think it's one of the reasons why I love to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it it's it is a blessing to that you I don't I didn't even ever meet my grandpas. You knew your all you grand well, not my dad, but yeah it's a it's nice to have that continuity of, of life to see that backward you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. are there um i'm gonna let you guys go in a minute because i know you have other things to do for this awesome podcast which i can't wait to listen to but are there books like if you were stranded on an island and i sort of hate this question because i'm always like what would i take um or um you know you could travel to one place and you had to take one or two books, three books with you that have meant everything, what would you, what would you take? It's a very dramatic question and very hypothetical. <laughs> I, I'm immediately like the encyclopedical <laughs> problems. Yeah, what, like, gotcha. yeah, the berry, what berries will kill me and what berries. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm bad at this kind of thing. Every, you know, because I was in Back to the Future, everyone's always like, what yes. time do go to? And I'm like, right now, there's penicillin and women can vote. <laughs> you know, I'm like, by the way, I love that you just said, you know, I was in the movie Back to the Future. I was like, yes, we know. <laughs> we know. But you're right. That's a question you probably get a lot where you're like, oh, uh, I, no. I might be useless with this one, but I'm um, sorry. Me too. What are yours? yours you yeah, know. tell us. Well, the book that changed me the most um, was Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. I studied it in high school and I um, just got to, um, it was the 50th anniversary, which I just can't even believe. Um, so books that I like to reread, which I think is like a more kind of normal question because we aren't, I mean, hopefully we aren't getting stranded. The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. And I got to talk with Oprah about it, who is a great reader obviously, and, um, and was friends with Toni Morrison. And we got to like have a book discussion on Zoom. And it was like the best, most fun to like both have our marked up copies. And then afterwards she text, you know, told me that she was gonna reread all of Toni Morrison. So I was like, well, if Oprah's gonna do that. So I spent my Christmas break rereading all of Toni Morrison and reading for the first time, um, at least one. And it was just, like a fun study you know i i read i part of what i do which is so fun is this book club and i the whole idea is to promote di diverse and debut authors so i'm always reading forward so to go back and study books that like changed me as a young person was i mean i'm, I'm still young but a really young person was so <laughs> much fun and um, so the bluest eye um a book that i love that I hope you all will read that, that one of the books that we've chosen um, is called Nothing to See Here um, by Kevin Wilson. It is the best. It's, it's hilarious. It's, um, I think, the, one of the most profound books about parenting, about the love, that, the unconditional love that parents have for their kids. I just loved it. Um, and I'm like that. And see, I'm, I'm too, I'm not great at this. I mean, an awesome list. I have now... Wait. One, two, three. I have five books I have. Somebody read. told uh, somebody told me that the the author of Olympia, Texas. Oh yes, she's Olymp not. I I tried to choose that book to be totally honest, and I I can't remember who sweeped in if it was Reese um, or <laughs> Good Morning America, but somebody sweeped in under me. But another really good one is called but Valentine. It's she's a West Texas writer. She didn't publish the book until she was in her 50s. Her name's Elizabeth Wetmore. Valentine, it just, Selma Hayek just purchased the rights for the movie. Um, it is going to be, it's five women in West Texas and their perspective about like one tragic thing. And it is so, the characters, it's just so brilliant. You can't believe that this woman has never written anything before. 
You read three. Oh, wait, what were you going to say? But Olympia, Texas, she she picked uh, Zoe and I to star in the movie. So I'm I'm for what that. What Yeah, she. Right? I sent you the thing. She. I guess she was on Good Morning America, and she said, "Oh, I'd like Leah Thompson and Zoe Deutsch to star in the movie." Why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> and uh, have also, you read it? Um, it's really no. beautiful. It was one that you know we're like kind of all in these these book clubs. I mean the beauty of it is that you want people to read and read widely and read things that maybe they wouldn't otherwise pick up. But that was one that I loved that got that got taken before I could even would, finish it. Would we be good in it? You would be brilliant. I mean, I get, she, and by the way, the writer, it's a debut. She's incredible. I say yes. I say go ahead and call your agents. I don't know how it works, but call I also, somebody. I also have these, I bought these great books. Um, they're they're uh, the Anna Pigeon Mysteries. And um, I'm trying to make the movies of these. The it's called Track of the Cat. They're old, but there's 19 of them. Oh, written fun! At a bar, and they're she's she. They're all about the national parks, and everybody's into the national parks. Yes, so Nevada bar books are amazing. Like there's one even set in, in at the Statue of Liberty, and they're also. But this this one's uh, set in Texas. The one uh, Track at of the Big Cat. Big Ben, Big Ben National oh. Park. No, it's a. Uh, Oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I can't believe I can't remember where. She can't it is. remember, but it's, it's yeah. But no, it's, it's right border, and it's oh, a oh. Real, what? No, Big Ben. That is Big Ben, the Rio Grande National Park, Big Ben. Mm -mm. No, no. I remember it as soon as the pressure's off. I'll remember. Okay, it. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll remember it because I, you know, do anyway. I sold it, and so hopefully we'll be making the movies for uh, Universal. Oh, but great. It's a great, it's a woman park ranger in all different national parks. It's super cool. Would you, but will that be a show, a television series or a movie? Series of movies. Oh, great. All different parks. So there's 19 books and it's like a badass woman park ranger who solves these mysteries and people love mysteries. I love mysteries. I love oh. mysteries. I mean, first of all, it kind of reminds me of Murder, She Wrote, which was Mm -hmm. My favorite show on television for a long period. Zoe might be a little young for Murder She Wrote, but I loved that show. But she's like, she's like always going against, you know, the yeah. Everybody in the park, everybody who works at the national parks is like a little bit off. They're like, you know, just very yeah. strong personalities. Yes. So the list of suspects is really amazing. So I forgot yeah. I love those books. I read nine. What? Um, do you have a favorite mystery? Can you think, I mean, maybe minus those, something else you love that... Mystery? I, yeah. I'm really bad at things she's, like this. She's, she's I can't like remember anything. Up that she... Well, by the way, neither can I. I mean, honestly, I'm like, I think I read that book. What happened? I mean, I, I'm the same way. So don't, don't I, worry. But, um, and I love mystery so much and I've yet to choose one. We've chosen 28 books because I love them so much that it's, read, it's read. hard. Read, read one of Nevada Bar's books. This one's okay, I just, I just wrote it down. I just wrote it down. Well, I want to thank you guys. Oh, wait, no. The last question. Somebody sent this in for you, Zoe. Um, as somebody who was in an adaptation of a YA book, which before I fall, I read because I was a teacher, an English teacher before I took this job. What a strange transition. But um, I was teaching in um, Baltimore at a middle school. And so I read that book because some of my students were reading it and they loved it and so I read it and I loved it and um so did you read that book did you read the book before you were in I know it was a long time ago but was oh, that your you first film no 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 but I've actually done three YA book to movie and with Before I Fall I did read it thoroughly many times before and so beautiful that movie it's a beautiful book Beautiful. Yeah, but the the um yeah, I did. It's interesting. It's so it's so helpful to have because it's almost like um an open diary. You have like the mm -hmm. diary in a way, and then you also sort of have to like free yourself from the mm -hmm. like, fears and restraints of like what people are gonna expect because reading is so magical. Reading is so you mm -hmm. get to create your own world, and you mm -hmm. just have to let go of that and let go. Of fact that it's not going to be what other everyone specifically imagined and that's okay so um uh yeah it's 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 like it's it, it can be a challenge I think a, a lot of avid readers are are kind of get bummed almost when movies get made from books but I was so um excited to make that movie and I'm really proud of it and I love the book 
And I'm on, I have a copy of my, my face is on the book and that's really cool. <laughs> right over Wait, here. what were your other adaptations? Uh, Beautiful Creatures and Vampire Academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I know, and it's hard because YA readers, they love, they love, they love the books. With, oh my God, the, you know, Vampire Academy, it was like, you're, how could you cast Zoe? Her boobs aren't big enough. And it was like, whoa, okay. Like, <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, in the costume fittings, we're like, add another pad, add another pad. <laughs> Never go to the movie if her boobs aren't big enough. And I was like, oh, I'm 18. Dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, you were like, can people stop talking about my boobs, please? Yes. <laughs> I do not. It was all around, a, you know, pretty hilarious. Yeah. And but, awkward. But, um, but before I fall, you know, it's such a beautiful good. book and um, really, really beautiful fun. film, too. Well, thank you guys so much. And congratulations on this series or this podcast, rather. Um, it <laughs> is so much fun. We got to listen to a little bit. Total Switch Show. Uh -huh. Which is adult because when our pers our producer was talking to us about it, she was like, "It's Freaky Friday." I was like, "Well, I listen to a little. It's not like <laughs> I'm going to listen to it with my children." <laughs> but it's so awesome, and I hope I'm going to send you guys some books. I'm going to try to get your info and send you some yes, books. Please. I'm going to send you. Thank I'll you. put you on my list. Thank you yes. so much. That's All right, fun. bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much Thanks for having me. So Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Leah. That was so much fun. Bye, everybody.